What's up guys? Today I'm going to talk about D4 and a lot of people have been talking about class balance and making builds with full sets of legendaries and it is relevant to like talk about this and see where classes line up but it's not really how we're going to be leveling. They already confirmed that the drop rate for legendaries was three times higher in the beta than it will be for release so you can't expect to get a lot of these full builds while leveling. So I went ahead and leveled every class to 25. Then I put together some builds that work well without any legendaries. The point of these builds is not to be the best, but they're to get you through the campaign without having to rely on any legendaries. But I still recommend that if you find one, of course, switch, or if you find an aspect in a dungeon you really like, switch there too. So let's start off with the Druid. I wanted to start here because I think it's the class that most people struggle with. And I don't disagree with the feedback that early leveling without legendaries, Druid does feel the weakest. But I think this build will provide enough survivability and damage to get you through the campaign and on to getting your aspects that you want. So let's start off with Stormstrike as our basic skill. It just does everything we need. It has great spirit generation, it has vulnerable, and it also immobilizes. Finally, we're gonna start off with three points into Pulverize. This is gonna give us guaranteed overwhelms or overpowers, and it's gonna also provide a two second stun, which is gonna later help us build up stacks with Landslide, but we'll get to that later. After we get our three points in Pulverize, you're going to need to keep your health above 80%. So I recommend immediately moving on to getting both defensives. I chose Earthen Bulwark and Blood Howl. They work to really well together to keep your health above 80%. And then I'd go back and start picking up Landslide. With Landslide, you're going to start dealing a lot more damage while you don't have your guaranteed overpower especially when you get the guaranteed crits on the last talent note. Finally, wrap it up with getting some more points in your defensives for extra fortify and lower cooldown on Blood Howl as well as some spirit generation. And then we can look at some passives in the core area which increase our damage and give us more spirit generation. The last skill is kind of up in the air I chose to go with Trample because it's a movement skill. It also does a bit of damage and CCs, but realistically, you could go for Petrify, which is going to do a full screen CC, or you could go with Vine Creeper, which a lot of people are having success with as well, which will do a good immobilize and some damage. Next, we're going to talk about Barb. I know a lot of people are gravitating towards the Bleed and Thorns build, so it's nothing new. But I tried it out for myself at 25 without any legendaries, and it seems pretty good. You get triple shout for good offense and defense while having pretty good sustain through bleeds. We're going to start off with Flay. That's going to feed into the bleed playstyle as well as give some damage reduction in thorns. Then you're going to move on to Rend. Of course, we're maxing this out. And... I chose to get the more Fury generation from it, but you could choose more damage. Then we start picking up our Shouts. Both Challenging Shout and Rallying Cry are really good. Challenging Shout giving you like 50% max health thorns, which is just insane. You can cheese bosses with this too. Um, and then you'll pick up the last Shout, and then the last ability is kind of up in the air. You could, again, go for a movement skill. Here, I chose Iron Maelstrom, which is just a pretty fun ability to use, but realistically, do what you want. As you might have guessed for Sorceress, we're going Hydra. So, a lot of people have been talking about Hydra, and you may have heard how it works, but I'll just briefly explain it. At level 15, you can get Fireball, and you can put that as your enchantment. That allows you, for when you kill things, for Fireball's damage to explode 
and basically chain reaction kill packs for you. This is really awesome because you can drag trash mobs onto an elite and pop the entire pack and pretty much kill elites that way. So first we're going to start off with leveling. You're not going to want to go, well, you can't go into Hydra right away. So I recommend starting off as Spark Chain Lightning. This is going to make the leveling experience extremely smooth and it's not really going to fall off. The main reason I like to switch to Hydra is because of density. Once you start getting into dungeons or any high density areas, you'll notice that you're going to have to use Chain Lightning a couple times before you're actually able to kill an entire pack. Whereas with Hydra and the Fireball enchantment, you're going to explode the entire pack. So, I would recommend switching around 15 when you get your enchantment, or whenever you can fully max out Hydra. So to start, when you switch over to Hydra, you're going to put one point in Firebolt. This is going to be your single target enchantment. It's going to add a little bit of fire damage to your single target damage. This is great for bossing. I don't really bother with it on elites or anything else. Then we're going to max out Fireball. Maxing out Fireball increases the damage that happens when the enchantment goes off and something explodes for 50% of Fireball's damage. So that means you definitely want to max it out. And we need to max it out anyway to get further into the tree. Then we get to pick up Teleport and our defensive skill. Of course, Ice Barrier, Frost Barrier, whatever it's called, it's extremely good. As you do damage, it's going to get stronger, so really, you just can't go wrong. And then with Teleport, you have great mobility, and during combat, you have a CC break as well. Finally, we move on to what starts to be a choice node. Of course, you're going to pick up Hydra, but then you get to choose between Ice Blades and another playstyle that's a little bit more active, which is using Fireball. If you want to try using Fireball, you'll do a little bit more damage, it's a little bit more active, but you also have to manage your mana. So that means you're going to want to keep up Hydra at all times, which means you have to kind of predict when your Hydra is going to run out and be ready to cast another one. So is a little bit of extra mana management, but it's fun playstyle as well. You choose Ice Blades, it's going to reduce the cooldowns of your other cooldowns, which is really nice, especially if you go Deep Freeze, which I'm going to talk about later. But it's a little bit less active, a little bit easier to play. And then the last choice is, of course, going to be between Deep Freeze or another defensive skill or whatever else you want. I chose Deep Freeze because it does a lot of damage. It gives you another like six second immunity. And it's pretty fun to use and freeze everything. Uh, in the clip that I show, it overpowers. So it literally murders all three elites at the same time, which is pretty cool. But it doesn't do that much damage all the time. I know there's a lot of hype for the Necro, a lot of the hype is surrounded around Blood Mist and Corpse Explosion, and of course, it is a really cool combo, and it's very strong. And Corpse Explosion in general has historically always been very strong. But, of course, we're not going to be able to use Legendary in this build. So, I went with a Blood Setup. Now, the benefit of the Blood Setup is you have Blood Passives that give you a ton of Fortify and... A ton of extra damage so it's still very fun to play you just have to focus a little bit more on building up resource with bone splinters speaking of your basic attack is going to be bone splinters which i think is the best basic attack in the game because it deals so much damage and you're going to get vulnerability for free basically when using the skill you just want to shotgun things and as long as two projectiles hit the target, which you're going to want all of them hitting the target, it's going to give you vulnerability on the target, and you're going to have a good time. Next, we're going to level up Blood Surge. 
Blood Surge is such a good ability. Not only does it heal you for everything it draws in blood from, it pretty much hits the entire screen when you use it for drawing in blood. And then it has a pretty good radius for the explosion. Then we kind of get to like pick whatever skills we want from here. I picked up Blood Mist as a defensive, didn't really ever use it. And then I picked up Decrepify as a curse for a little like fun interaction with stunning and damage reduction. Again, didn't really need to use it. And then instead of picking two other skills, I just used the golem and the minions to tank. For the mages, I set them specifically for increased resource generation for the frost mages, but I don't really think it matters. I just use them to tank some hits. <sighs> Finally, the rogue surprised me. I went into the rogue with pretty much no expectations. I didn't really hear about the rogue that much. I heard a couple comments here and there on Reddit or I watched Rax's video killing the world boss, but no one was really talking about the rogue's damage. Well, I when I leveled the rogue, I got the Twisted Blades legendary. And as soon as I got it, it just started killing everything. I mean, within seconds it would kill elites easy. So I had a lot of fun leveling the rogue, and in the background you can see me going up against the Quadragon boss, and it just absolutely shreds this boss. Before it even gets to summon the first guy, it's dead. And I didn't even play it well, because I didn't keep hitting my imbue as I was spamming the button for Twisted Blades. I was just sitting there stunned. Moving on though, of course, we're not going to be able to use the legendary. But when I went to try out no legendaries, I just took off my legendaries and used the same build. And it turns out that Twisted Blades is actually still really good. And so Rogue ends up being one of my favorite classes with Twisted Blades because it becomes a lot more strategic. You have to do a little bit more planning when you're Stabbing something with Twisted Blades, you want to dash across the pack so that the Twisted Blades come back and kill everything. And it has a very active positional playstyle, which is really fun. But it's not going to be for everyone. I leveled with Flurry up until I got Twisted Blades Legendary, so that could be an option as well. So let's start off with Puncture being the skill that you're going to take right away. Similar to how Bone Splinters works, you're going to throw three daggers. You're going to want to be in melee range to shotgun those daggers to get the guaranteed vulnerability. It does okay damage, nowhere near Bone Splinters, but it'll be sufficient for when you don't have enough energy to use Twisted Blades. Of course, next, we're getting to Twisted Blades. We're going to level it up, and we're going to pick the CDR reduction. The CDR reduction just is so strong when you start using it with imbue and other abilities that it really becomes a lot more fun. Then we get to pick up our movement abilities and I think the rogue might have the best movement in the game. I haven't fully looked at all the classes but by far when I was leveling with the rogue it just felt so fast. I got dash you get Shadow Step, and then soon you pick up Stealth, which also gives you a movement speed buff. And it just becomes very fun to play the Rogue, because you get full setup with Stealth, and then in combat, it Stealth becomes a generator for energy as well. And then you get to zip around the battlefield after you use Twisted Blades to make sure you're hitting exactly what you want. All right, so to wrap it up, these builds, are just some builds that will work well without legendaries. They're not gonna be the best builds, and if you find a legendary or an aspect you wanna build around, I definitely recommend switching. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hopefully, I'll be making more D4 content up until release and after.